Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dee Sparrow's Journey. Are you not entertained? This is Domina, and the reason why I just said that is because Domina, if it was a movie, it would probably be the gladiator. Domina is a, I would say, clicker kind of game where you have to manage your gladiators to be able to win in the arena with different kind of conditions. You might be fighting several gladiators with just one of yours. You might be fighting a whole team with your team. You might be fighting even unfair situations where your gladiator is stuck to a chain with lions around him. And there's all sorts of different fights in Domina. Domina, in the end, becomes a management game with a lot of clicking required so that you manage your gladiators well in order to progress through the game entirely. One thing I'll criticize right now about Domina, and I don't like to start on a bad note, but I don't like the fact that you cannot start a new game and get back to it if you're not done with it on the first go. Let's start a new game and stop blabbing. The game at the start is completely random. You start with uh, two gladiators already equipped and one which they call slave. You get slaves which you can make gladiators, but uh, you gotta you know, think really deeply about it and not waste your time with a slave that doesn't have good stats to be a gladiator. So we're gonna proceed without the tutorial, I'm gonna try to explain it myself. And another thing that I really don't like about the game is how you cannot even pause it. The game is paused right now and it is paused in most screens, but when you are in this screen back there, which is supposedly your house, because you're gonna perform as this lady down here, if you notice. You're gonna perform as Lannister. Then you have the Magistrate and you have the Legate. You have to try and please the Legate and the Magistrate, because they are both the ones that uh, organize the matches for your gladiators. And if you don't please them, if they are somewhat angry at you, they will give you really, really hard matches. Water and food is what is consumed on a daily basis by your gladiators. You gotta keep that always up or your gladiators will be really sad and perform badly in the arena. Coin is used mostly for all the actions in the game, like equipping your gladiators, like uh, upgrading uh, certain stats in your gladiators. Wine is used for things like uh, motivation, for morale in your gladiators. Over here on the top right, you can already notice that my next battle will be in two days. That is really, really short for someone that is just about to start the game. And believe me, at the start is you know, the most busiest time you'll ever have in this game. And on the very utmost top right, you have days left. 363. Those are the days left for the big championship. If until then you don't win at least three of the big fights that I was talking about earlier, you're gonna automatically lose the game. If you win three of those, you will have access to a big championship, which you will have to win. If you don't win that, you lose the game entirely again. So in this panel over here, finally, we are managing the Doctor Info. This guy is basically the one that takes care of the gladiators, and he is the one that gives updates, or let's say upgrades, to your gladiators. So over here, I'm going to choose Humility. Gladiator can surrender at any time during the battle, potentially saving his life. We're also going to do something over here which saves you a lot of time. Enable automatic gladiator training. I would also advise you to do that. Now, we're going to move our gladiators over there, because I like to have them over there. Those are the first spots that will be upgraded if I choose the Architect to improve my house. So this is the panel for each Gladiator. In here, you can see all his stats, you can see what he is good for, and you can see his class. There's three different classes. Thryax, which is sort of a... a sort of warrior which protects himself with a shield. For 15 coins, I guess I'm gonna upgrade that and give this guy some, some some better weapons. You can also manage all or almost all parts of his armor. Different classes have different kinds of armor or they have different parts of the armor that can be upgraded. We can also manage his stats. You have agility, weapon, defense, strength, meditate. Meditate is how proficient the guy will be by himself because you can control the gladiators on this game. You can control at least one and if you don't control them, the AI will take care of the other gladiators on your team. So this guy has a lot of points in Evasive. So Evasive basically tells that the gladiator is gonna try to move around rather than stay in one position and protect himself with a shield. So this guy will try to evade the strikes rather than protect himself with a shield block. So what you need to do with this guy is, I reckon, give him agility points. 
Agility points will increase this guy's movement speed. So I'm going to focus on that. Even though he is, you know, a Thrahex and a Thrahex is supposed to use his shield. But at the start, you have no other choice than going with Thrahex. At the start, they give you a slave. Slaves can be trained, but they don't have a class yet. It's down to you to choose which class are they going to go with. Right now, because I don't have the Retarius and the Mormillo, kind of funny name, Retarius. I'm going to go with Thrahex because I'm forced to go with that. I could save this guy until I have the other classes available and choose this guy to be one of those. But it's going to take a long, long time before we are able to choose Mormillo or the other class. So this guy has a lot of evasive as well. We're going to go all the way up with Meditate. And we're going to put also Agility, which is pretty much the same that the previous guy had. Now I'm going to equip him with the standard uh, equipment over here. I'm going to give him a weapon. I always give the 22 plus weapon to every single one of my gladiators, no matter where they are in skill. Because if you have a 9 plus one, it's not going to do any damage whatsoever. You don't want to give a lot of weight into a Mormillo class, for instance, because that guy depends on evading attacks. So you want that guy to be total weight low, so that he can move on quickly. So I'm going to fight over here Clodios, and we're going to fight for the Magistrate. That he is the host. So if we participate in this fight, the magistrate will like us better. If we reject terms, which we can, if we see we don't have any chances of winning this match, he will not like us in the future. I'm gonna go with this guy. You can see them that they are filtered by coin, which means this guy has the most coin invested in him because of his equipment. I'm gonna choose that. Normally, it's not always the same or the best choice to go with the highest value one. Sometimes you want to go with the other ones depending on what the opponent has. So this guy has AI skill 12, mine has zero. This is not good. One of the things that I always try to have before the very first fight is the upgrade that allows me to control my own gladiator and we will have it eventually. Let's see if we can win this fight. Right now it will be AI against AI. You can see at the top uh, right and top uh, right and uh, bottom right I mean all the stats for the current fighters. I do a lot more damage than him, so I should be able to win this. Even though we're gonna struggle. This was basically a low AI against low AI, so as you saw, it was basically attack, defend, attack, defend. Not much going on there, but there's different several moves you can do in the game, which uh, most likely the AI will do if uh, you allow them. So now we have two new slaves. This guy has a lot of evasive and some turtle and this one has a lot of turtle and a lot of aggro this guy is really good to be a thryx in my opinion so we're gonna choose that and we're gonna improve this is what i always go with at the start i always go with all meditate because in the end in a big championship you will have a team of gladiators fighting a whole team of gladiators so you will not be able to control all the gladiators at your disposal you will control one and all of the other ones will be controlled by AI. So you want to always guarantee that all your gladiators have a good AI at the uh, later state in the game. So we're going to go with Meditate and also I'm going to have him go with Strength. Strength is going to improve his HP and also his attack damage. This guy has, is very aggressive so you will always try to attack. So it's good to have attacking uh, stats on him. I'm going to equip him as well. You never know if we're going to have a fight where we will have more than, say, two gladiators. So I always want to grant that I have at least three of them equipped. Now, one thing that I really find cool in this game, not only you have to manage water, wine, and food. Wine is some sort of luxury kind of item. You don't really need it to survive. One thing I really love in this game is hire employees. So... Each game can be different depending on what kind of employees do you hire. So normally, I always go, and this is how I know how to play best, so I'm going to do that to perform, I guess, decently in this video. I'm going to go with the Architect. Architect, I, I should say, it should always be one of the first you get, and also the Blacksmith, Faber. So for now, we're going to stop there because they require some coin to be hired. And these guys, what they can do is, Faber, for instance, has an ability which I love. Not only he repairs um, the, your gladiator's uh, weapons and armor after a fight, but also he does automatic upgrades. These are upgrades that you can have on each different employee, and some of them stay if you fire that employee. And the architect will start building Palus. You have several different kind of upgrades to your house. I'm going to go with Palus. Palus 
gather stones and dig hot coal pits. These three will allow your gladiators to train each different stat faster. So let's go. I actually think I'm going to go with dig hot coal pit first because this improves agility training time. And almost all of my gladiators currently have uh, agility training time. We're also going to try and have mind control for the next fight. So let's go ahead and choose that. Now, as I was trying to say, Jupiter's Blessings, these, these are cards that you can put on a gladiator. And let's see, Recipients, Morale never fails. Let's go with that, for instance. Let's put it over here. And Gladiator's Weapon Training goes 500% faster. So who is training weapon? Currently, no one. Let's see what can be our third employee. So we can go with the Educator. We can go with the Agent. Agent is almost always the one that I pick as well. Because he is a good money source. What the agent can do is, he can do dirty work, basically spying on the magistrate and on the legate, and then you can get money by blackmailing them. He also can get free armor and free weapons for your fighters. But what I really want right now is a way to make my gladiators train faster, so I'm gonna go with the educator. He only costs 30 coin, and I do believe you get to keep the upgrades from him, even if you fire them later. So I'm gonna give, for instance, I know what I want. Philosophy. Gladiators reach a deeper understanding of the true nature of body and mind. So plus one AI fighting proficiency. So I'm gonna give this to all my gladiators. Architect finished building a dig hot coal pit. As you can see, it's over there now. It starts by building over here and then it goes all the way to the ones to the right. So you want to have the architect from the very beginning so that you are allowed to you know, have improvements in your house that will allow your gladiators to train faster. So this guy is a Thryax. He does 21 damage. He has a blessing, Helm Breaker. And he is very ev evasive and very turtle. Which basically means that he's gonna evade my attacks a lot. He's very defensive. He is very defensive, so let's see what we got here. Let's compare these two. So, I have better armor. I have the same amount of damage. And I have better AI skills, so we should be able to win this fight. Hopefully. Let's see how it goes. On the next fight, we will be able to control our gladiator already. Let's see how we do now. Losing a fight at the very beginning of the game is really, really bad. It's a really big hit. I find this part exciting in the game. Uh, watching, we lost. As I've said, it's really bad to lose a fighter. Oh, we can save him though. If we click fast on your, our mouse, we can actually save your gladiator, which is great. At least I got to keep him, and I think I got to keep all his equipment as well. No, we lost the cursed shield, so it's probably the worst shield we could have. So this guy is down to almost no health, but at least we were able to save him. In the legate, and also the magistrate, you can suggest a gladiator patronage, but this can only be done when they really like you, when the morale is all the way up there. The friendship, not really morale. And you can increase their friendship by sending wine, for instance, like so. But the more you do this, the more wine it will cost to improve that same stat, that friendship. So, suggesting a gladiator patronage basically means that that uh, gladiator will have all costs on this guy. So you will not have to pay for food and water for that guy. You can also purchase gladiators from this guy or arrange an exhibition match. If you do this, you will improve friendship with him, but these exhibition matches don't give you anything. No coins, no food, no water. It's basically a way for you to increase the friendship. If we go on to purchase gladiators, we can see all here kinds, all kinds of gladiators. And they are costly, but they are already equipped. And they normally have some stats up, but never AI skill. If we go here to the magistrate, you can see pretty much the same thing. I'm going to use some of the wine, because the more you have this bar up, the better matches you will have in front of you. You will not have to fight really tough warriors. So we can also, over here, compared to the legates, pretty much the only difference is that you can purchase slaves and not gladiators. Slaves are the guys that are not equipped at all. They don't have any proficiency in fighting, but you can check down there their base stats. Aggro, turtle, and evasive. If you find something over there that you really like, you can purchase this guy and train him from the very beginning. Alright, who did their job? Educator did a job, so I'm gonna go with something like, let's see. Because we don't have a medic, 
let's explore a way for my guys to heal quicker. So let's go with that. Finally, we have mind control. Mind control will allow me to control my own gladiators in the fight, and I love that. Now, from this point on, you can either choose to go on into the polyarm way and finally have Retarius training, or you can go into the Mermilo training. I like the Mermilo class, so I'm gonna go and try to get it. From this point on, I suppose you don't need to care about AI skill unless you have fights where you have more than one gladiator of your gladiator fighting, because I'm gonna control the other one. Let's see, I'm gonna pick over here, I guess, Repulsianus. He does 37 damage, and he has a really good armor. So, he is very evasive as well, so let's go with that. And now I'm gonna control uh, him. As you can see over there, there's the icon for the gamepad, which means I'm gonna control the guy. I'm using keyboard and mouse, basically this is played like in Soldat, that really old 2D game. You are attacking the, f the way that you are facing, and I can right-click for the shield. Ouch. This guy can barrel roll. I cannot do that currently. I don't have the upgrade yet. Basically what I do is I keep the shield up at all times, and then whenever I see an opening, I go in and attack with my left click. So we got two slaves. This guy trained a lot. We got wine and coin. Let's see what we can do with that. So we got Eusebius. Let's see what they can do. Eusebius is good in evasive. But not much else. So what I'm gonna do right now, let's see what the other guy can do. This guy has a lot of turtle. I'm gonna keep this one. So I am going to grant freedom to this guy because it will increase the other people's, the other gladiators' morale. So this guy attacks by 25 damage. And he doesn't have much armor. He's gonna evade a lot. I would like to know how much does he wait. I know this is very specific. But if this guy is gonna play as evasive, he's gonna barrel roll and run a lot. But if he is heavy, you will not be able to do that too much. So, we need to pick up someone that is able to evade a lot too. This guy has two victories already. Um, he attacks a lot by the way, 46 is really good. I think I'm gonna choose Junius. Because he can attack decently too. And he has some evasive, which will allow him to chase this guy. I love all the background sounds by the way, I think they are really well done. And if I haven't mentioned yet, the soundtrack is amazing. I love the songs in this game. did a lot more damage than him in one strike because we would be in trouble. The guy attacked me a lot. Let's see, this guy must be all wrecked. Yeah, look at his... Hold up, was it this one? And why is he so angry at me? Let's reward him with some wine. Or coin, maybe? This is not improving his temperament for some reason. Maybe we need to grant some freedom to one of these guys. Let's see what we got over here. We got a very evasive guy. And we got, let's see the other one. This guy is not too great. This guy has pretty much every single stat up. It can be good, being good at everything, but I like gladiators that are good in one specific way. And he's very heavy, as you can see, 96 kilos without any armor. So I'm gonna grant freedom to this one. Hopefully this guy has improved. Angry still. We're gonna get, this time around, the agent. I love the agent. He allows me to do dirty stuff, like spy on Magistrate and spy on Legate. When you do this, you will be able to either blackmail the person that you've spied on, and that will give you a lot of money, but you will hurt the friendship with that person a lot. Or, and I, as I usually do, you can deliver the secrets to the opponent. Because the Legate and the Magistrate really fight each other at all times. So if you spy on the Legate, you can eventually sell the secrets that you found to the Magistrate. This will not only give you a little bit of money, not too much, not as much as if you blackmailed the own person that you got the secrets from, but it will also improve their friendship. 
So currently, he is a stranger. You gotta be careful with how much uh, currently he is known in the area. He currently is just a stranger, so I'm gonna keep it like that for now. This is gonna be a tough fight, but he's gonna give us a lot of rewards. So let's see how this goes. This guy does a lot of damage. I need to keep my shield up at all times. You know, participating in the fights, being the one controlling the gladiator is really great, but I do think that the fights end really quickly. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, he completely wrecked me. He completely wrecked me. It was a big risk going into this fight. And he died. We didn't even have a chance to make him live by choosing the meter, which, uh, you know, has the deciding button between winning and losing. I was trying to get the Mermilo, but it's taking a lot of time, and we will still have to investigate into Mermilo training. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I think I've showed you enough of Domina to understand if you, if it is a game that you are going to eventually enjoy or not. It's basically a management game for your gladiators, where you need to manage every, pretty much every single aspect in the game. And I also consider it some sort of clicker because you need to do things really, really fast. You are on a really time schedule and the clock never stops. Here's an interesting fight where you have lions, one on each side. I guess we can finish there. This is a fight that I really would like to show you because it's different. You have lions on both different sides, I suppose. We can try to push the gladiator down there, near the lion, and he's gonna be hit by the lion, and he did, so he eventually died. You have to play out with all these things, there's just not lions, there's something else out there sometimes, which throws uh, a lot more fun times into the fights themselves, especially when you are the, the one controlling the gladiators. So this was Domina by Dolphin Barn, it's a game that it's available right now already today. Um, on Steam and uh, I hope you have enjoyed the video if you have please don't forget to subscribe I'm now hungry because I'm not buying food for my gladiators and I'll see you on the next video. Have a good day. Bye. Bye